What's up, gamers? <laughs> didn't see that one coming. Did no, you? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see it at all. Actually, truly unpredictable. Yeah, uh, that's what we pride ourselves on here at the Bad Boy Crime Studios within the greater Los Angeles area. Oh, we're in LA. We've been in LA. I I just I'm not good with directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I didn't west. know where we were. I Go love West, young big west guy. Padawan. Um, the Wild West. Yeah, we're in LA. Um we've moved anymore, out. We've become it. we've become Hollywood versions of ourselves. <laughs> you know so, what I mean? So do uh did we just recently move to LA? Yeah, and yeah. now this, this is, is the first this episode. Is like this first is episode our Hollywood arc. Yeah, right. Yeah. Got it. We've sold out season. Season three starts now. Yeah. And we're, it, we're Hollywood big time people. The paprika season. The I third can't wait to see how the. Uh, knows about. Is that Blue's Clues? That is Blue's Clues. Nice. <laughs> dude, how, how cute was paprika? Hell yeah, dude. Magenta? Hell yeah, Hell yeah magenta. They had a lot. They oh. had. I think uh, Salt and Pepper had even more kids, actually. Salt and pepper, come on, come uh, on! So I typed in salt and pepper. I got salt and pepper. Uh, yeah, yeah, the rappers, the rappers. I'm like, no, no, no! I want Blues Clues. You know, what oh, you I can get realize? you can get real life. Uh, the Spice Family is is the full name. Oh, they have oh they have little baby Ginger as well. Ginger's a new one. Yeah, who is um. Oh wait! Oh no, they have two more. What? Yo, and they have like they have them. Uh, gin- so so paprika is a girl, and she's a girl because uh, she's holding a cell phone. She has oh, a cell phone, sick. and <laughs> then uh, cinnamon is a boy, and he's got like mm-hmm. his his lid for his for the pouring the, the spices is like a a backwards cap. I was going to say a fitted. And then there's Sage and Ginger who are twin babies. Uh-huh. And they have little corks in their heads, which is funny. I I like them a lot. Apparently there's also Grandma Cayenne. Interesting. That's a big family. Oh. Well, man, Salt and Pepper been getting busy. For being like tertiary characters. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that they like get continued development over the course of the series they just keep adding spice how great's the spice family folks and to think when yeah, we when we got spice, into blues clues scary spice <laughs> oh man i was into blues clues at ground zero my guy yeah same here so it's crazy to think we we started with just salt and pepper and then we there's a whole whole ass family Blossomed. Now. yeah is blues clues still going yeah i think so I think so as well. I know Steve came back on TikTok and it was like, what's up guys? I'm Steve from Blue's Clues. Guess what? I'm they back. Have a, they have a Josh now is I believe the newest of the... Yeah. They go from Joe to Josh? Come on. That's not different enough. Also, his shirts are still blue. Like Green? No, he, he's blue. Josh is blue. So is so. Oh no, Joe had boxes, right? I don't know. Uh, is Josh white? (laughs) Okay, this is. I'm reading the uh, the no. Josh is uh, Filipino, I think, because it says he speaks Filipino. So I would assume. Mm, okay. Uh, the reason why Joshua Dela, this is from the wiki. The reason Joshua Dela Cruz plays the role of Josh in this series is that in real life, many people with the name Joshua go by Josh. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like it was written by me. 
<laughs> it sounds like yeah. Well, it was just written by a child. Yeah. Yeah, Josh. That that tracks. <laughs> um. All right. Welcome, Josh. I guess. Come on the. Cast. Apparently, there's also a Rainbow Puppy. Mm. Who is 3D? What the fuck is Blue 3D now? Um, blue <laughs> they have her pronouns. They have her pronouns D. in the wiki. <laughs> Hell yeah! They had a whole like Pride Parade episode with like non-binary dogs and stuff. Did you know Blue? Uh, Blue's 3D too. Do you know Blue has a younger brother named Sprinkles? I didn't know that. Oh, how cute is Sprinkles? All right, you're gonna make me. We're Spr- Sprinkles this. has uh, lots of different oh. colored spots. I love Sprinkles. Sprinkles is great. 3D as hell. Well, uh, th- Sprinkles is just a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> How many D's does a puppet have? Blue's room. Who's what's that? Current- oh, this is I think from the Joe era is when Sprinkles was. All right. Uh, maybe Blue's Room is like a, a different series where it's like a puppet show and like Blue talks or something. Maybe. Uh, I have no idea. The Blue's Clues Pride Parade sing along. Oh, Sprinkles is owned by Joe. Apparently, Josh is Joe's cousin. Mm. Oh, yeah. Blue is way too 3D. Yeah, I don't. I they should keep the puppets were cool. They should do the puppets. I'm yeah, reboot original puppet now. 2D edition baby. They have baby blue. What the fuck? Okay, so I'm watching the Pride Parade episode of Blues Clues. It's a single <laughs> one. First float <laughs> is astronaut alligators who are gay. Okay, why? Wait, what makes them gay? They have rainbow flags. Oh, they could just be supporting being gay. No, I think it explicitly says that they're gay. This oh, okay. family has two daddies. That's cool. Um, a little bear with a tutu. Come on, friends. Families marching three by three. All right. Uh, I believe. What's the non-binary flag look like? Is it yellow, white, purple, black? My. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think that's it. Mm. Well, let's look it up so we can look it up. Yeah, it is correct. Yellow, yeah. white, purple, black. Uh, yeah, these are non-binary dolphins in a wheelchair. Which, like, sick. Um, let the record show. Ill as fuck. Ill as fuck. Think it's, I just think it's a little weird. That um, the dolphins are not raping people. <laughs> what? <laughs> the dolphins famously rape. I don't know about that. Do you remember Periwinkle the cat? No. Uh, yeah, I was I a big peri- I'm a big Periwinkle. periwinkle. The color. If I had to guess Periwinkle, it's a coral. No, it's no a blue. Harry Winkle is a little purple cat. Yeah, it's like a blue, basically. No, apparently basically. Steve and Joe still pop up in uh, Blue's Clues and You mm-hmm. as uh, recurring friends. Um, oh, side table drawer. I was a big side table drawer stand. Dude, they, this yeah. is the, the clues we used to blue. Yeah. Apparently Orange Kitten is a character uh, who doesn't have a name, but it's just Come named... On. <laughs> Orange I mean, kitten. they're all named after the color, and you're going to get Orange Kitten. Just name him Orange. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, Orange Kitten is a kitten currently attending Miss Marigold's preschool class, along with Blue, Magenta, Purple Kangaroo, Green Puppy, and Periwinkle. <laughs> all right. And apparently, Orange Kitten's favorite color is pink. And not they're Orange. Like, uh... <laughs> Well, what's your favorite color? Yellow? <laughs> no. No, is it because I'm wearing a yellow shirt? Or is it for other reasons? Huh? It's the shirt. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think you're being a little bit. It's the shirt. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, tur- tur- Turquoise the Turtle, a classic yeah. character. The Felt's Friends. 
All right, this is too many Blue's Clues references. This is not even references. We're just reading the Wikipedia page for 10 minutes about Blue's Clues. You're that was just fun, reading. though. It was, it, fun, is, it was a fun little blast. It was blast fun to catch up because I didn't <laughs> know any the... of that shit. I only I... really know Blue and, like, kind of Magenta. Yeah, no, I was well, I was excited to see how big the Spice family has gotten. Yeah, they're getting it on. They have, uh, all, Too much, really, for a kid's show. I'm like, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> Yeah, salt and pepper are like straight up just like raw dogging next to paprika, and I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's okay. How does paprika have a phone? <laughs> does Technology. she go to spice school? Is there <laughs> what what soda is that you got there? I got um, a mug root beer. Ooh, that sounds very you know um, delicious to the taste and very desirable. You know? It is. Yeah. Hashtag ad. Um, I got it because there's no caffeine and I need to go to sleep soon. Uh, a, little, a little sleepy time episode a out in LA. Sleepy time episode. Um, yeah, we're so after a long Coast. day of podcasting. We gotta go to Betty by both of us yeah. do because it's we are in the same room in the Bad yep. Boy Crime Studios in LA. Um, our producers, our producers did not like me going off about Blues Cruise, but this is my show. I don't fucking it's listen to them. It's also my show, show equally. Yeah. yeah. The point is, it's not their show. No. No. Producer, Whose show is it? Who's to say? But it's not theirs. Producer Kevin? You don't Kevin. get to say. Fucking Kevin, dude. Kevin wants us to, you know, do cold <laughs> opens and... Uh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because they see, I just don't, change the theme I song? don't understand why anybody, and I do mean this. Why would you want to listen to 30 seconds and go, Oh, that was funny. I'm going to keep listening. So that later in the thing, you could hear the same 30 seconds and you'd be like, wow, that's I heard that already. Like, well, I, it's like, is this a callback joke? No, it's the same exact audio. It's not, Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. You just heard it already. It's like a little spoiler. Uh, like, is that's what regular do regular for. does that work on normal people? Is it supposed to be clickbait? Because like the title's clickbait, and then it's like here's more clickbait after you like I'm already listening. I'm like already do you in. have to, do you just pick the because you know other institutions that do this trick? I wouldn't even necessarily say they're picking the funniest part. Yeah, or the wackiest part of of whatever they're doing. You know, I'm not, the, I don't want to know the most suspenseful if this is a. A crime drama perhaps yeah it's just like something how i'm like okay like yeah like unless That's you're doing something really interesting because you can do it in a way that is genuinely interesting but it always feels like when it's being done on like a podcast or like a youtube channel or something mm-hmm. it's like this is to just get a hook in not a strong hook but like yeah you accidentally you work, you're hooks, trying to you fish and you hook yourself that's the kind of hook yeah, you're like oh, this kind of hurts, but like I'll just pull it out. It's fine. Yeah, <sighs> I don't know. I, I, really I don't, don't understand like it. it. So Kevin, just like stop fucking talking about it. Don't. Yeah, Kevin, shut the fuck up. <laughs> don't you're fired. It. Kevin, get no. out. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Kevin's he's gone. He ran, he's crying. And good. Yeah, he, he shouldn't. Don't I'm fucking mess glad. with us. Um. Yeah, I also don't. I also don't understand video podcasts just as a. No, I would medium. never. I don't. I would never participate. The whole point of a podcast one. is to listen to it while you're doing something else. <laughs> yeah, the idea of like my activity for the day is to watch a podcast is insane. It's like that's psychotic behavior. <laughs> Like, truly like sincerely it is though <laughs> either that or it's like is this what normal like is are we just not like i don't want to be like we're special not or we're super in, smart in but tune? like is that like a, a norm for lack of better like if word, this is family feud do? are we getting triple x's yeah like are we are we stupid for not doing it apparently so but like i don't i just don't enjoy i just like i don't want to look at podcast. people sitting at a table talking yeah i can just hear them ha- talk. I, yeah i can hear them just fine i'm not missing anything other than visual bits which you shouldn't be doing anyway if you're doing podcast a podcast with visual bits so stupid 
Particularly it, if they don't even have the video the, option. No, honestly, you know, I, I kind of think that makes it better. That because we do it because we do that. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, here's the thing: if you can tell a visual bit is happening, but you can't tell exactly what it is, I feel like that's a lot more intriguing than a cold open of like. Yeah, like if I say, "Wow, coach is making a goofy face," you get to imagine anything that you want. Yeah, and but you're never going to get it exactly right, and you're like, "Is he doing other funny things throughout the episode?" Is he I don't doing? Know. I can't and like, if I just say that, could be he he could be doing Chinese face, right? Like. He's probably I, mean, I, kind of, not. I think I, well, I, I'm sort of some might say I'm doing it all the time on accident. <laughs> yep. Some and others might say <laughs> that if you do it, you're going to jail. I'd love, I want to go to jail so bad. <laughs> Me too. Um, I would not last in jail. I Martha would Stewart do, I lasted would... in jail. No way. Uh uh-uh, uh. I dude. would thrive in jail, dude. Uh uh-uh, uh, dude. Do you think trans um, women go to women jail or do you think jail is transphobic? I think jail is. Or do you think they just kill the trans woman before <laughs> they even have a chance to end up in jail? I think that no trans <laughs> thought... woman has ever committed a crime. So <laughs> that's we'll they never... are morally superior to the rest of us. We'll never true. find out what they do. Where, where do non-binary people go? Heaven. <laughs> So true. <laughs> so true, King. Um, yeah. Uh, apparently, if you're non binary, you could be a dolphin in a wheelchair. And that's cool. That's was, is sick. That, that was that the Blue's Clues Parade. That was the Blue's Clues Parade. <laughs> I mean, good, good on them for being, I don't know. It's a nice show. Yeah. yeah. I I, if, if I had a kid, I'd be I like, yeah, you could watch it's Blue's cool. Clues. I think the contingent of non-binary dolphins in wheelchairs watching Blue's Clues, pretty minimal. But if it's kind of like when you do, when a comedian does a joke that's just like, it gets so niche that it's just for one person by the end of yeah. it. It's kind of like that's that. That's me almost all the time. <laughs> yeah. Because I am a comedian. No, uh, well, I mean, in, in their defense, there's only three or four human people in the Blue's Clues world. Yeah. So like, Almost all the characters are animals or yeah. inanimate objects. <laughs> I think it's just like interesting. The, what, what if the next kid that Salt and Pepper have is non binary? What would a non binary like be? They're all non binary, right? Like, no, they're not. They, they're, they are gender. They have pronouns for sure. in their bio. <laughs> I think they have pronouns in their bio. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean that's that's fine. I think it's interesting the other features that the animals in the Pride Parade got. Like, well, okay, so I'm looking up Ginger right now, and her species uh-huh. is Ginger Shaker, which I find very uncomfortable. Uh, but her gender is female, but it doesn't say she/her pronouns. Okay. But other character, I think it just depends on who's editing the wiki. Yeah, that makes. Sense. Or maybe she's too young for her to like. Yeah, they, she have hasn't st- figured it out yet. They don't want to force anything on her. Uh, well, Paprika's older. I mean, because she's What's got her damn interesting, phone. Interesting. The the question that was just raised is: so her species is Ginger Shaker. Yeah. So that leads me to believe that they're the object and not the spice. Y- yeah. Well, because I guess you you don't want the because you could theoretically like kill them by spilling all of their spice, like right, could or you? using up all of the spice in cooking. I feel like if they're just the shaker, then it's like so paprika could be filled with anything. Yeah. Okay, so how come? Okay, why don't they fucking have the pronouns for all of the characters? They only have it for some of the characters, like they rainbow puppy. Who doesn't have a name but does have pronouns? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But fucking Mrs. Pepper, yeah, who is a she's a she/her if I've ever seen one, you know. Uh huh. Well, maybe maybe with Rainbow Puppy, it's not super clear the gender, so they put in the pronouns. Sure, that's fine. Um, I think that's interesting that they're 
the physical shaker and yeah. not the spice. Leads me to believe how leads me to wonder rather when um, Ms. Pepper, as it were, yeah, is birthing these children. I don't want to think about this at all. <laughs> <laughs> Just shaking it out the top is a, it's a little. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm getting at. I've, we've spent like 20 minutes on Blue's Clues. <laughs> We it's, gotta, the, it's the clues we used to blue, you know? Yeah, that's the title of the episode. Um, I don't know. I think that that's good. I'm going to go out on a limb. I, I'm going to say that it's all good. And Just Blue's Clues? Yeah, Blue's yeah, Clues good. are good. I love a good mystery, you know? They, they, a real I mean, every episode. Every, every episode is a good whodunit. It's usually um, blue, right? It's, it's usually <laughs> blue. It's almost always blue. Uh, but how come Steve, like, you know what? I would love like an edgy adult reboot of original mm-hmm. Steve from Blue's Clues who rediscovers his power to Blue, blue Skidoo, Skidoo. Mm-hmm. and uses that to like fuck yeah, just, like a weird psych. No, no <laughs> just to do like a weird psychological <laughs> horror dreamlike movie like a freddy krueger but only for uh renaissance subjects he goes into yeah. renaissance paintings yeah and then like one night there's a murder like outside of the painting like in in the museum and he goes through the different painting and then it's like somebody else has the power and it's like joe who's really the murderer or something that'd be crazy that would never happen but that would be fucking cool i mean we could write this movie and just not make it about blue. blues, yeah. So he's just, just skidoo. This is a guy. Yeah, this is a guy who can skidoo. <laughs> That's the yeah. name of the movie. He has skidoo. The, he has the generic version of skidooing. <laughs> he jumps no in the paintings, names. and people will be like, "Wow, this is such an obvious Super Mario sixty four reference." And we'll be like, yeah. "You fucking idiot, you fucking plebeians, dude." <laughs> Obviously, this is a blues clue. You don't reference. know shit about. <laughs> Fucking rainbow puppy. Oh, I know so much about rainbow puppy. I don't know about sage and ginger, you idiot. You probably think dolphins don't use wheelchairs. <laughs> um, yeah. I love a wheelchair dolphin. We could write a movie where a dude can go into paintings and he's like a... It's like a night at the museum, but instead of the paintings and the artifacts coming to life, he goes into the... You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he goes into the paintings, watching. which are yeah. He's watching from the screen by Edvard Munch, and he's just like peeking behind him a little bit, like, and he sees a murderer afoot. Well, what's that one guy who I don't remember his name, but in all of his paintings, he has like one person who's di- looking directly. Salvador like, Dali. No, no, no. Um, yeah, I'm gonna look it up. All right. I'm unaware of this, but I might remember when you tell me. Like when you tell me, about, like, oh yeah, 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 I knew that, I knew that. It's like it's like um, <clears throat> he always has somebody looking directly. It's like a it bunch of people familiar. in like a party or something, and there's gonna be like one lady in the background who's just looking right at you. It's like they and don't it's very know concerning that I know about the camera. Yeah. Some people are like, it's breaking the fourth wall. I'm like, it's not breaking it. He's just leaning on it. Because that person could just be looking at somebody behind the yeah. perspective of where the It's a POV shot. Is. Yeah. POV. Uh, you stumbled upon a blues clue. <laughs> I, I, I need to get the blues, blues clues TikTok and just start making like weird <laughs> blues clues <laughs> meme videos. They'll be like, oh yeah, this is relatable to... <laughs> five-year-olds well, but it's like, like all edge it's like edgy adult content so it's just for nobody yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. for you i love that i love that stuff that's just for nobody um me too yeah but steve from blues clues joined tiktok and everyone was just like oh my god it's steve and then he did like a video where he's just like do at me and i'll like politely listen to you 
telling me about your interest that you've gotten since you've grown up. And then he'll just do a video where he's just like, mm-hmm. he'll be like yeah, mm-hmm. nice. that's so cool, dude. Awesome. And then people would do it and be like, this is my rock collection. This is my granite. This is my quartz. And then Steve's just like, nice, dude. You've grown up so friggin' I'll smart. Be like, I'll be like, dude, here's my Amiibo collection of all the Super Smash Brothers fighters that are currently available. And everybody would yeah. be like, and he'd be like, you haven't really grown up at all. <laughs> <laughs> you might have regressed. Yeah. Uh, but he did his first. So he's just like doing that to nobody. And then people are duetting it to explain their thing. So he's kind of like phoning it in a little bit. Um, and then, you know. Oh, that doesn't I count. Think, That's just him doing yeah. a default, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's truly the auto responder email of TikTok. I should be um, like, these are my swords. Mm-hmm. And if you like, love That's that, so cool. Dude. Well, he would. He has to. He has to. That's he's how already works. loved it. He already has. These are my yeah. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure figures. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I th- like that happened for like two days and I don't think he's uploaded since, but he made like a big deal of his comeback. And then I think he fell off plus ratio plus L bozo. Sorry. I need to you think I'm the first guy to call. Dad. No. Sorry, my cat, my dad's cat is uh, dying. So it was also my cat. So this is a, uh... A, a hot topic event. Um, yeah. Too bad it's so far away, being that we're in Los Angeles. Um, I have a meeting with uh, H. John Benjamin. We're working on an Adult Swim show together. And I believe you have a meeting with Ari Aster to be the lead in his new movie. Do do I get killed in his new movie by some girl? Who's to say? I think honestly, yeah, that would absolutely. I would abs- I am very much in many ways the, the lead, lead guy, not the lead, but the lead dude in an Ari uh-huh. Aster film that is going to just bumble his way into getting murdered by a woman. Mm-hmm. You'll get your your cranium smashed. Man, I, I feel that happening. I feel like we're on the precipice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's truly uh, the definition of um, method acting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I method act, but it's just like, sadly, in our DiCaprio characters. What about method acting? Um but it's a movie where you die. What about Sean Bean method acting? <laughs> he just kills himself. I think I could do that. No hate to Sean Bean. He's just the actor who dies most frequently. Is he? Uh, he's up there. Name a movie Sean Bean didn't die in. Saving Private Ryan. See, the joke is that he's not <laughs> in that one. Isn't he in Lord of the Rings? He is in Lord of the Rings. Is he Sean plays. Bean known for dying? That's literally mm-hmm. the, the, yeah. Two Sean dozen Bond. on-screen deaths in his nearly 40-year career. That's a lot. Wow. He's in the I Snowpiercer think... show, apparently. Never heard of it. I think that he should be seen Bean or Sean Bond. I think he needs to pick. That is true. Or at least he has to write a five-paragraph essay on to why. He was in National Treasure. Uh, yeah, he was the villain. Hmm. That bounced right off me. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's one of those things um, where we find out that the society has been pronouncing his name wrong the whole time. Like when you realize that it's actually pronounced Steve Buscemi. Is it really? And that's yeah, that's how he says it. That's how he gets like called out on Conan and stuff. They'll be like, "It's Steve Buscemi," um, but nobody says that. And it's also 
William Defoe. William Defoe. William Defoe. Um, I mean, I think his name is William Defoe because in most all of the movies, he is he's Defoe the villain to yeah. the hero. The Willem DeFriend. And he's... Has he ever been a good guy? <laughs> uh, yeah, Spider-Man 2. No. He's <laughs> dead. <laughs> um... Willem, I was. I'm like, it should be William, but it's Willem. Well, what the truth of the matter is? Where's his fucking? Everyone says Willem Dafoe, and then there was a, a clip of him when he was like 18 that surfaced. It was like at his high school graduation or something, and he's reading out his own name, and he's like, mm-hmm. "My name is William Dafoe," and then everyone's like, "What the frick, dude?" You just been letting us misgender you this whole time, um, and then he did an interview and it's just like, yeah, like I changed it for Hollywood. Yeah, um, but technically, legally speaking, I believe it's William Dafoe. Um, I also here's another celebrity name that everyone mispronounces because mm-hmm. this is hot content. Um, <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, it is. It's low and not low hand. That's yeah. just like dumb white people shit. Whereas, like Defoe, like Ooh. looking at Defoe, you would think it would be pronounced Defoe and not Defoe. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable. Yeah, man, he's been in a lot of movies. Holy shit! Yeah, he has. This dude does not stop working. Um. What's a movie that he was in where he was the friend? I don't, I mean, I don't know. Um, I think he was... I, I can only think of Spider-Man. I know he's he's in the Boondock Saints, and he's a cop in that one. So, bad guy. Well, A-Cab, yeah. Um, but he is kind of like, he's kind of like a wink and a nod, like, these guys are good. Okay, well, he plays he plays in, in this. Um, it's not a great movie, but at Eternity's Gate, which is like a Vincent Van Gogh movie, he plays Vincent Van Gogh. So, Vincent Van Gogh, known alcoholic, and we do not stand. He well, he is the protagonist, though. So, all right. Now, I guess in Nightmare uh, Alley, he wasn't he wasn't a good guy, but he wasn't strictly speaking the villain. He was just right. a, an Will asshole. The friend. Willem DeFriend. Um, we were spending a lot of time this episode just reading, reading. facts off the internet, which we well, never do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Famously, I mean, what, uh, we never do that. I've been really busy with work, so I haven't. I, I haven't really had any fun anecdotes um, from my personal life to, to share yeah. with the, the listeners. I was at work, other than our big move to LA, which has been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's been wild. Um, and by work, I mean doing the show full time, and we we have rehearsals and um, a lot of research reads. goes into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a whole production. Um, I have to yeah. now, and now I have even more work on my plate because we fucking fired Kevin to find yep. a new fucking producer. We have to find a new producer. We have to. I wonder if producer Brett needs a little more work. Mm. I don't know if he's qualified personally. I don't know if he. Well, uh, you're the, the one chops. who said that, not me. I don't know if he has the chops for this production. Um, yeah, something a little lowbrow like Doom Scroll, I think he's perfect for. Yeah. I think, you know, get your, I mean, with, <laughs> get your feet wet. Get your feet wet. You can't just cold open to me podcast. reading Blues Clues facts. <laughs> uh,. Yeah, what if there was a cold open? All right, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna do the cold open right now. now. And that's why I said paper bag, I hardly know her. I think oh I my god, that, that's <laughs> really applicable to my to, life. <laughs> yeah. Paper, I hardly know her. There we go. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Um I don't know. Yeah, no, okay, no, here, here it is. All right, hold on. Okay, okay, redo, redo. The, the cashier was like, 
paper or plastic? And I said, paper? I hardly know her. And then we play the theme song. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, do, do. That's not how know. it goes. <laughs> no, that's the price is it right. Goes, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what if it was the price is right and then randomly it's just like, where am I? <laughs> Drew Carey. Just... <laughs> I wonder oh, if he yeah. has ever said that. Where am I, folks? That's not what he sounds like. I wonder if he's ever said the words where am and I in a row splice together into where am I and then splice that into a weird remix of the Price is Right theme song. Yeah. And then you just send it to him in an email. (laughs) Be like, you could use this on your show. (laughs) Or our new Price is Right podcast. Hmm. We, we should watch every is right episode of the do Price reaction right. content to the Price is Right. That one dollar good. That was good. That was a good choice. Uh, two dollars, man, you got fucked. It's- no, we, we, every, every week we watch one episode of The Price is Right. We take notes mm-hmm. and we, we and discuss then- it. Honestly, that would be more successful than this current show. Yeah. Because people would be like, there hasn't been a Price is Right pro- podcast before. So I guess yeah. we'll listen to it. And then we'll and get then, shouted out on the Procrastinators podcast. I hope not, dude. Um, I think that that could be a valuable resource for people going on The Price is Right. Yeah. Like, if you're going to go on The Price is Right, and then you have, like, a detailed breakdown of, like, this is how much this cost, and this is what they bid, and this is why that was a bad idea. If we analyze it, we go through the numbers of it all, yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do the numbers. Dude. I don't know any fucking numbers, actually. Never mind. Yeah, well, leave that to me. I'm kind of a numbers guy. That's true. You are the Riddler. I, mm, I think I might That's become true. the Riddler. I might become uh, Bane. Yeah. I might Why become, are you Bane? Because uh, I forgot the girl's name. Catwoman. <laughs> What's Bane's girlfriend's name? Oh, uh, fucking the French lady. Yeah, that's me. Um, You're her? Yeah, I studied under Ra's al Ghul. Isn't it like Talia? Yeah, that sounds right. It, like her real name? Her Govey? Uh, uh, Bane's girlfriend. Right? Dark Knight rises. Oh, yo, in this one animated series, she is hot. Holy shit. Um, I totally forgot that she was Ra's al Ghul's daughter. Yeah, dude. Talia al Ghul can get it for Mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. I absolutely would fall in love with her and then uh, have that be my undoing for that current story arc of the batman absolutely going into it i'd be like this will ruin me and yet i i must press on i don't have a choice you know um yeah i'm not gonna say anything i encourage you not to say anything but i'm gonna send you this little article that i stumbled upon and you just take a little peek at that and i don't say anything i just silently read <laughs> on just silently the read um no, Did you, you send it? It didn't, po- it didn't pop it's, up in the chat. In the little, you might have to scroll. Oh, no, it, it took a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's mm? interesting. Mm? It's a little, you, know, you make a little face to that article. Let me I tell did. you. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I like the photo caption. I think it's very <laughs> This it is. A long I mean, I, why can't why can't I not talk about this? It's a good article. Uh, no, you can talk about it. I just, oh, okay. I thought it would be funny. Yeah. So the article that was sent, I'm just going to read the headline: is Why is Donald Trump obsessed with Bane in The Dark Knight Rises? And it has like a picture of Donald Trump and a picture of Bane like next to each other. And like they did their best to find the Donald Trump picture where he's stanced up the most like Bane. Yeah. I guess he's obsessed with Bane. I mean, I don't know. I guess. I mean, I have no no reason to believe otherwise. And then they threw in a little 
Trump tweet at the bottom. Wait, everyone no, did Donald Trump down. review The Dark Knight Rises? No, everyone should calm down. Ben Affleck is going to do great a great job as Batman. No, hold on, hold on. He's he's doing a whole there's a whole hold, I'm gonna listen to this. I don't know. Oh yeah, you did. You're right. I scrolled past it. <laughs> oh my god, this is so funny. He's he posts a video. I wish I wish he went back to do this. I wish Donald Trump got back on Twitter and just did reasonable beef in like for 40 seconds. He's like, people are telling me I need to review things, especially movies. So I was like, Oh, I just got back from the dark Knight rises. Also known as the Batman movie. <laughs> he thinks I it's mean, really terrific. Yeah. I believe that he's obsessed with Bane. He's praising the cinematography. Uh huh. It's good cinematography. <laughs> He's like, the technology is amazing. You could have done it three years ago. You could have done it two years ago. <laughs> One year ago, maybe so. But in 2010, yeah. 2009? Absolutely No not. way. <laughs> no, you needed those extra years after the Dark Knight to really build up the technology. <laughs> His last point was, well, most importantly, Trump Tower is in the movie. <laughs> He's not wrong. That is the most important part of it. Wow, I love I, see, I love his reviews. Yeah, he did like a daily vlog for like two years. Um, I don't know. Are there more? Yeah, there's a lot. I don't know about reviews. Actually, I don't know. I don't know anything. Um, I mean, we might have to do the Donald Trump movie reviews. The Don Zone. We might have to do the Don Zone. Do you think we can get Nick on the Dawn Zone? <laughs> what are the chances? Um, yeah. Uh, so, oh my god. So there's a guy who uh, is running a Twitter account called Trump's Movie Reviews, which has three followers. And uh, it looks like he only did two posts, but uh, they're just voice, they're voice messages of him reviewing Inglorious Bastards and The Departed. <laughs> <laughs> And the movies. picture is Donald Trump with Joker makeup. This is exactly the content that Matt Dugzone wants to yeah. hear from Bad Boy Crimes. Our He's going to jump on this and immediately talk about it on the Doug Zone. Yep. And he's going to DM this guy to get him on the cast. On the Doug Zone, yeah. He's going to DM him these words exactly. Hello, would you like to do my Doug Walker themed podcast? And he will get left on delivered, my guy. So left on delivered. Um, much like uh, the Grinch. Ever heard of him? Um, I have heard of the Grinch. He yeah. was kind of left on delivered. Any orphan left on delivered, my guy. It's no good. Where are these other fucking saying, movie reviews? Where am I? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like in your head or just like, yeah, you should um, say that at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The workplace is a wild environment. Um, now, as previous, I'll get into it a little bit because we have a few minutes before we get into the crimes. Um, so, as previously stated, I am the only white person at the box factory. Mm -hmm. um, in my department, at least. And I don't... I haven't spent this much time with this many black people <laughs> in my life. Really? Um, really. I mean, it, like, it's six hours a day, minimum, yeah. uh, for... Like every day. This um, is going to be a stupid question. Is Canada more white, you would say, than yeah. the United States? Or is it roughly the like, same? Like America is the melting pot and Canada is like a lukewarm mug. It's mm -hmm. like we have diverse. We have a lot of diversity within the major cities, but we only have like three cities. So, yeah. If you go outside, like if you, I live in Toronto. I'm currently in Los Angeles, but I live in Toronto. Yeah, um, you're commuting. I'm commuting daily. Yeah, crazy hours. Man. 
Um, excuse me. Uh, if I go like 15 minutes outside of downtown, it's like all white people in farmland. Mm -hmm. And that's like our biggest city. Um, so if you imagine if you go to a province that has no major cities, it's like pretty, um, pretty snowy. I'll say not very heterogeneous. Sure. Yeah. Um, now to, to no, let the record, they call show. me, they call me the heterogeneous. No, I'm saying. Sure. <laughs> Nice, dude. Cause, dude I get it. Be, that could be a rapper name. Yeah. I, I I think I might just be a rapper. You could be a rapper. I'll make you a track. To be clear, I do hang out with black people. We've had a black person on the show before, my close personal friend. Um, It's just like, it's a, a long time on a regular basis, which I don't do because I don't hang out with anyone. Um, and their smack talk, very different from my smack talk. I feel like you don't do a whole lot of smack talk. I don't really. Uh, but they're, they're saying stuff that like would never in like a hundred years enter my brain. Yeah. Um, it was very slow. So they fashioned a ball out of some, some plastic and tape. Mm hmm. And they're they're playing makeshift basketball. Love um, makeshift basketball. It was mostly just like, you know, make this shot first to five. Um, and the smack talk is like, oh, there's a lot of like, you know, your lineup's not good. You got to get a haircut. <clears throat> you know, you're balding, dude. Uh, the one that I found very interesting. Was when was the last time you got a checkup? And they were just like <laughs> roasting this guy. He's like, you don't see the doctor, man. And they're like, look at your fingernails. Google what fingernails say about your health, and then look at your fingernails, and you tell me what you learn. And I'm like, what the? What are you even talking about? Did you just like, have? Did the guy have fucked up fingernails? Because my fingernails no. are immaculate. <laughs> Those fingernails are fine. It was just, just like some weird, like make you insecure <laughs> about something. I don't know. And they're just like, and he's like, I've been to the doctor seeing... within yeah. a, a year. <laughs> no, he's like, I don't go to the doctor. Um, and they're like, you got to get a checkup, my man. They didn't say man. My um, guy. <laughs> my guy. Uh, uh, yeah. well, oh, they said, uh, I see what they yeah, said. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, can't yeah. say it. <laughs> I can't say it. Um, and they were just like, really drilling into him that he needs to go get a checkup at the doctor. Very funny. Just like a thing that I would never roast someone for in my life. I wouldn't even think of roasting it. I would just, I mean, now yeah. I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. Um, yeah. Very, very interesting. Um, fun time. Love those guys. We're going to hang out again next week. This at week. work, at work, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's as that soon as as soon as I clock out of that job, I do not speak to any of them, and that's not a bit. I walk <laughs> out of that building silent. You're like, and I, I've had a, I've had my fill of <laughs> these people. I'm going home. Is that what these you're saying? Specific people who I work with because it's it's been a long few hours. Um. And then I, so I will a go sus if you ask me. And then I will go to the bus stop, and they will wait at the same bus stop, and I will not look at them. Um, <laughs> this doesn't sound that's, great. That's because we should do I'm... the cold open. We should do the cold open. <laughs> yeah. for this little chunk. <laughs> no, we already we already wrote the cold open. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, um, <laughs> we start doing cold opens, <laughs> ironically. <laughs> Every cold open just starts with, man, fuck cold opens. That's just <laughs> whack. As a whack, dude. Um, <laughs> uh, theme song by Digital Monster. SoundCloud.com slash Digital Monster. 
I said this in the Discord and nobody reacted, but like his name is Digital Monster. And he pitch shifts his voice to be scary. Like that's what when a rapper is just like, here's where the devil does an interlude in the song and he's I'm yeah. speaking to the devil. They that's what they do. They pitch shift they their do voice that? to like J. Cole does that, Eminem's done that. That's weird. They'll be like, yeah, like the devil's talking to me. Honestly, yeah, the devil's talking to me, and they will pitch shift their voice to sound exactly like that, Mm -hmm. and that's what he's doing. And the song that he makes is just like a saxophone loop. It's not, (laughs) it's not digital, and it's not monstrous. And he's doing like an evil voice on top of it. What are you doing, dude? This is a thematic nightmare. No, I don't. I think I think you're. I think you're reading a little too much into it. I don't think it's that deep. No, it's not that deep. I'm you could be saying. a monster that isn't the devil. <laughs> yep. Okay, but what monster plays the saxophone? Bill Clinton? Yeah. All right. That's a great example. <laughs> I, as I was saying that, I was like, Bill Clinton's a funny <laughs> like answer. Like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, got myself, I guess. I um, fucking got him. Fucking got him, dude. Uh, anyway, it's 51 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> What's your cry? Uh, Alligator Man uh, is going to have to be next week because this one uh, really stood out to me. Alligator Man for sure next week, but this one stood out to me as something that was like very interesting because it seems like I should know this, but I had never considered knowing it. Um, now, this is the crime committed by a man named Ernesto Miranda. Does that sound familiar? Do you know where this is going? It sounds familiar, but no. I'm, I'm an idiot. But um, er, the, the name is, is... Ernesto Arturo Miranda. Miranda. Miranda, the female. Miranda is the male. How sexist is language, dude? Um, So sexist. American criminal and laborer. Um, Well, I mean, in a lot of ways, doing crime is hard labor. It's true. Um, That's why they get paid so much. Bank robbers, they make 400K a year, buddy. Yeah. That's blue uh, clo- that's blue collar honest American work, you know. It's true. Remember when you read that weird thing stating the salary of a bank robber? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> that's what I was referencing. Anyway, so uh, Ernesto Miranda. Um, now this is the interesting part. Let me go back yeah. to my other article here. Um, so. March 2nd, 1963, 18-year-old woman calls the police. She says, hello, cops. I've been abducted and raped in the desert. And the police, um, I guess in the old days, actually did their job. And they tracked down a car that matched her description, um, including a partial license plate. um, And found a man who had a prior record as a peeping Tom, but nothing more. It's they no arrest I mean, him. Frankly, should have just killed him on the spot. Mm. Violating women like that, I don't stand for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. sure. Um, so they, they arrest him mm-hmm. um, on suspicion of robbery, kidnapping, and rape. Um, now here's where it gets interesting. Uh, they put him in a lineup. So description of the car, partial license plate matches. He's a peeping Tom. And they're like, we got the bitch. Right. Um, and they're like, come to the police station. We're going to put you in a lineup. And he's like, all right, no problem. Cooperative friendly right um now he's just a person of interest he's not formally in custody at the moment Mm -hmm. 
and they do the lineup and then Ernesto comes out of it and he's talking to the cops and he's like, how'd I do? Did I pass? And they're like, "Eh, maybe perhaps somebody has pointed to you in the past few minutes. They're just like implying heavily that perhaps he was identified. Um, And then they arrest him formally and they're interrogating him. And he handwrites a confession to kidnapping and rape. No, it's not good. I mean, the the, confession's good, but the the things are bad. Yeah, the things are bad. That's my professional opinion. At the top of each piece of paper, at the top Mm -hmm. of every sheet, um, was the printed certification. This statement has been made voluntarily and of my own free will, with no threats, coercion, or promises of immunity, and with full knowledge of my legal rights, understanding any statement I make can and will be used against me. Now, that's the important part. Um, They bring him to the victim, and then Ernesto's like, that's the girl. He points her out in a lineup, basically. Um, And then the girl hears him say, that's the girl, and she's like, that's the dude. Confirmed voice match. Um, And then the interesting part is on the paper specifically it says with full knowledge of my legal rights. Now you may be wondering about the Miranda rights because his last name's Miranda. Uh, they didn't exist at the moment. He so was not saying he was not read his Miranda rights. So he did not have full knowledge of his legal rights. Therefore a confession entirely invalid. Is that why they're called the Miranda rights? That's why they're called the Miranda rights. Isn't that interesting? It is interesting. Um, I had never really thought about that. Uh, And then I was like, what's the deal with the Miranda rights? (laughs) Who is Miranda? (laughs) Exactly. What's this bitch Miranda up to? Um, Little did you know. Not informed of his right to have an attorney present or of his right to remain silent while he was arrested or before his interrogation. Um, and so the trial was conducted before Maricopa County Superior Court Judge. Now, this is a, I feel like this is a fake judge. His name is Judge Yale McFate. He's just handing out your fate, and he went to Yale. It sounds like it sounds like an ace attorney character. <laughs> <laughs> it seems fake. Um, So he was in jail for three years and then uh, three years to the day plus one. So he's Mm -hmm. convicted June 12th, 1963, overturned June 13th, 1966 for tainted evidence. Um, And following that, they retried him and... They're like, we cannot use that confession because it's no good. It's, it's tainted. Um, and then he got convicted again. And they're like, yeah, you still definitely did it. Um, and then uh, he, he was convicted again in 67 for kidnapping and raping an 18 year old woman. Um, and he went to jail for uh, nine years and was stabbed to death at the age of 34. Uh, Did not really do his time. And that's that's where the Miranda rights comes from, everybody. Wow. And and people say they don't learn anything from our podcast. I thought that that was very interesting. This might be the most informative podcast we've ever done. Yeah, I learned a lot about Blue's Clues. I remembered that Ari Aster exists. Sure. Um, Miranda rights. Miranda rights. I learned that as well. Donald Trump movie reviews. Yep. That was new. Um, Do you have a crime that you can do in 30 seconds? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Skip. Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of Russian crimes recently. It's been a bit of a theme, but I figured I'd Are mix you it up. it in 30 seconds, even when you're Russian? All right, go on. Oh, no, but this is – well, I can't because I'm not Russian. I'm doing a Ukrainian mm-hmm. crime. I'm the- Turn the tables. Folks. Turn. I mean, I love turning the tables, as we uh, as we know. But so, so this is look, called. You gotta the, look at issues from every side. Yeah. Um, so it's disclaimer. There's a lot of words in this uh, Wikipedia article that I w- will butcher the pronunciation of because I do not speak Russian uh, mm-hmm. or Ukrainian, which okay. are. Very similar. similar looking languages. Similar. From, yeah. Uh, so this is called the Dinip, the Dinipropitskovitsk Maniacs. <laughs> uh, and I'm never going to say uh, that again. Do I know these people? I don't know. Um, one of them kind of looks like Joe Jonas. The other one has a very bad haircut. But they are um, Ukrainian serial killers. Um mm-hmm. And the first two murders, I believe they both occurred in Dnipro, which that one's that was an easy one. Uh-huh. Uh, the names of the guys are uh, uh, Victor Sayenko, Sayenko maybe. Yeah. Uh, he's nineteen. Okay. Uh, they're both nineteen at the time of the of the murders. And Igor uh, Su- Nope, Sapronyuk. That was close. Um, so. The first two murders occurred late on, and this article was clearly written by some asshole from across the pond because they do the fucking day before the month. 25 June 2007. No, it's June 25th, idiot. Um, So the first uh, victim was a 33-year-old woman who was just walking home and having tea at her friend's apartment um, after having tea, whatever. And then – him the the two murderers uh were just like out on a walk and one of them had a hammer and like as the lady walked by like one of the dudes just spun around and like bonked her on the head <laughs> with mm-hmm. the hammer um and then oh, within an right hour there. of that murder the two guys attacked another guy who was just sleeping on a bench <laughs> uh also with with blunt objects i would assume they kept using the hammer yeah um they have video of this yeah. On July 1st, two more victims were found murdered in the nearby town of Novo <laughs> Novomoskovitsk. Uh sure. Mm-hmm. Um and then like another 5 days later, three more people were murdered in Dnipro. Um again, they're all kind of bludgeoned to death with um stuff. Um one lady, the the guy like they just walked by him, and the guy was hiding the hammer under his shirt, and just whacked her a few more times after she fell down. Um, and she'd be carrying a bag filled with clothes, so they just like grabbed the clothes to clean the hammer, and then threw the bag out. And then the same night, they murdered another woman. Um, There's too many murders, my guy. Th- these guys were very for just guys who are hitting people with hammers, very prolific. Mm-hmm. Like, what a spree. Um, the next day, uh, they, they attacked two 14-year-old boys. Um, one was killed. The other managed to run away. Um, and then a 48-year-old guy who was disabled from cancer went missing, and it was then found uh, four days later. And it looked like he was also bludgeoned to death. Um Days later, another person this was attacked. <laughs> I don't know the exact total, but then um, another person bludgeoned to death, and then twelve more murders followed that. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, what's, what's their kill count at? I have no idea. Um, they're charged with twenty uh, twenty one murders and eight more attacks where the victims survived. That's, that's a high. That's pretty high for this high for, for our like, podcast. Like, for again, just hitting people like basically with hammers as well. It seems so quick. I mean, less than a month. I mean, they're yeah. doing almost like one a day, like that's, on average, which is yeah. a, that's a lot of killing. Um, that's more than I've done. 
and I'm way older. Oh, apparently they're uh, they're gouging eyes out sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. One pregnant woman had a fetus cut from her womb. Uh, they did not do any sexual assault on any of the victims. That that was made clear by the the Wikipedia article. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes like they rob them. Written by a man on the inside, to be honest. Yeah, well, maybe uh, Igor or uh, Victor wrote it. Yeah. Um, but these guys are arrested um, the 23rd of July. Um, mm-hmm. And apparently uh, it was because one of them tried to sell a mobile phone stolen from one of the victims to a pawn shop, which you don't do. Um, also, yeah, when, sure. not when you've killed 21 people uh, <laughs> with I hammers. Say, don't commit a crime while you're committing a crime. Yeah. Um, also, there's a third suspect, Alexander Hansa, uh, but I don't think he had a whole lot to do with the attacker. Because according to Wikipedia, he was charged with two armed robberies that took place before the murder spree. But I think it was largely just the two, the two first guys. And he was like kind of a third conspirator. Yeah. Um, he's just along for the ride for the most part. Yeah. These guys. Uh, so yeah, they're charged with 21 murders with eight more attacks. Um, yeah. I, yeah, no, yeah, it was the work. The first two guys were charged with 27 and 25, uh, it, I guess, incidents. And then Hansa was only charged with the armed robbery stuff. Um, they they all confessed, although one of them withdrew the confession. Um, that guy pled not guilty. And then uh, they, I think, went for the insanity plea and that like did not work. Um, yeah. So more or less uh prosecution got I think life imprisonment for the two bad boys and then 15 years of hard labor for the armed robbery dude. Uh they, they never established a motive behind any of this. Um yeah, that's the thing with serial killing. It's like there's generally no motive. Yeah, well at least it's, it's like it's just like bloodthirst. According to local media, like apparently they part of how they got caught was because they were posting videos of this like online. Like one of them got leaked. Um, And so like I've seen the video. Yeah. The unpleasant. I'll tell you. Well, I I can't imagine how pleasant somebody getting beaten to death with hammers would be. I'm assuming that's what I mean. That's what they basically did in all of them. Yeah. Um, So there's a lot of speculation on what the the motives were. Uh, Local media reported the killers had a plan to get rich from the murder videos they recorded. One suspect's girlfriend reported that they planned to make 40 separate videos of murders. And they only got like half of that. So that wasn't very good. Uh, This was corroborated by a former classmate who claimed he often heard Sopranyuk was in contact with an unknown rich foreign website operator who ordered 40 snuff videos and would pay much money once they were made. Uh, the, I think Wikipedia you edit your article. Front, that I think you got to pay up front for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, or maybe it was like, you know, you get 20% now and 80% when you, when yeah. you finish it. I just take the 20 and, and like tell the police. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you get to keep that money. Ah, uh, I'd be like, oh, I lost it. <laughs> uh, regional. <laughs> Do you get to keep that money? I mean, it was given to you, right? And it's not going to have, like, it's not like a check that's, like, for murder in the memo spot. Like, you know, it's untraceable Bitcoin. It pro- it wasn't, because this is before Bitcoin existed. Um, yeah. But presumably, it's just like, this is, he gave me this money, and I'm reporting him separately. You know? Maybe yeah, you could keep it. I think you could finesse those cops. Ukrainian cops, come on. Well, I just I'd be like someone was soliciting me uh to make snuff videos, uh so I would like look into that. Mm-hmm. And they also didn't pay me any money, I swear, wink. And then I'd run away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Here's an anonymous tip. Look into this guy. Yeah. 
so apparently some of the photographs that they were, I guess, taking of the crimes, he was adding caption. Well, uh, this was Sopranyuk, who seemed to be the mm-hmm. worst the of mastermind. the two. Yeah. He was including captions like, the weak must die, the strongest will conquer. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, who's to say? Who's um, to say Charles Darwin didn't say that first? Yeah. Oh, it was, what was the it. sentencing? So, uh, if, yeah. Okay, so so the armed robbery guy only got nine years uh, sentencing, and then it's fine. The other two got life imprisonment. That makes sense. Um, they're maniacs. They went for an appeal, but they uh, did not get it. Uh, in in 2019, Hansa had been released from prison after serving nine years and is married with two children. So, um, suck on that. Yeah. Um, and then apparently there's an al- alleged copycat case in Irkutsk. Um, yeah. Which is known as the Academy Maniacs. Uh, they were arrested in connection with six murders and attack on residents in Irkutsk. Um, the attacks, which involved a mallet and a knife, began in December 2010. And again, these guys were arrested after a video recording showing a female body being mutilated with a knife was found on camera belonging to uh, Litkin's uncle, which is the name of one of the guys um, who had become suspicious. He was a little suspicious of, uh, Hey uncle, can we borrow your camera for a, a art project? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should look at what these boys are up to. Yeah. How's uh, that art project going? You filming women putting their feet into cabinets um, what? <laughs> I don't know. That's my idea of an art project, I guess. Uh, is that that the end? That Any, is the end. More? Okay. I wanted to circle back to Miranda. I didn't realize this is at the very bottom of the article, but this should be the top. Because honestly, this is cool. Um, Ernesto Miranda got paroled um, which I didn't realize and after his release he was autographing uh, and selling cards that had the Miranda rights written on them for a dollar fifty a piece which is a steal honestly that is a steal that's an interesting piece of memorabilia Is it like, I think so. Cause it's normally like celebrity stuff, but this is like, I'm a rapist who got off of prison and I invented the Miranda rights. Oh yeah. True. I mean, if that was me, I'd probably like frame it and put it on a wall. Yeah. I'd have guests over to my house and be like, check this out. They'd be like, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. Um, it's to think about who would be buying that is very interesting. Be the like, Miranda Wright, you know? Yeah. And he would write on the cards. Um, and then he got arrested numerous times for minor driving offenses. How did he get arrested for driving? How minor can a driving offense be if you're arrested for it, though? Yeah. Like, you'd have to be drinking while driving, which is a felony, right? Well, what if you get arrested for, like, running a stop sign? No, they don't arrest you for that. They just give they you a might. ticket. In 1972? They don't even pull you over. They'll just send you a picture of you doing that. Yeah, maybe say, you. Got him. Maybe you, Mr. White Man. This is Ernesto Miranda I'm talking about. Um, oh, how, how white passing is he, though? Not. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. Um, well, I, I am a white passing Arizona. Chinese man. Yeah. Oh, in Arizona, yeah, they'd be... They'd be Jones yeah. in to get yeah. that guy. Um, and then he was arrested for the possession of a gun. The charges were dropped yet again. Um, but that was in violation of his parole. And he went back to prison. Um, and then he was released. And then he was in a bar in downtown Phoenix. And then there was a bar fight and he got stabbed to death. And he had several cards with the Miranda rights written on them on his person. What a so. wild dude. 
he's he's an interesting guy. There's a whole section about his early life, and I didn't look at any of that. Well, who needs? Who cares about that? When we're we want to get to know the murders because we yeah. love death on a true crime podcast. We love glorifying. He didn't kill people anybody, dying. He did get killed. Yeah. Um, well, people only like true crime when people die, though. I don't think people are like, oh yeah, a rapist. Let's learn about that story. I mean, you have to say that immediately after I told the story of a rapist. Um, yeah. All right. That's yeah. fine. Uh, that's the episode. Alligator Man next week. I promise. For real this time. For real. I, I've been doing a bit of a bit. But like for real this time. Next week is Alligator Man. Um, but until then, just yeah. imagine what horrific things this man was doing. Um, presumably to alligators. Presumably to alligators, but maybe, maybe not. Not maybe in um, in collusion with the alligators. You'll have to tune in to find out. Yeah, maybe he was leading the alligators in a cult like fashion. Uh, but do not look it up. I will be talking about it one week from today coach do you have anything to say any final thoughts any plugs um take it away (laughs) it's a lot of pressure uh no i don't have any plugs uh i was on the doug you were on the doug zone which i already plugged in the past you plugged it before it was before it came out so i guess check it out again uh it's a good episode i actually listened to it i was like oh yeah that was that was good um Mm -hmm. we had fun some wholesome fun in the first like 40 minutes and then it kind of, you know, um, takes yeah, a time, but it's fine. All of um, the information, uh, has left my brain, but I do remember listening to it and being like, yep, that's an episode of the Doug zone. It, um, it sure was. <laughs> um, they, they said Bazinga at the end. They did they, that. I did listen to back. that part and I did listen yeah. to the theme song. Yeah. Um, uh, that's about it. Yeah, I don't have anything else. All right. Prayer, um, prayers. For, by the time you're listening to this, that, that cat's probably dead. All uh, right, so P. Pr- pr- prayer, you know, say a prayer for, for Lily. Uh, Lily, yeah. you were uh, one of the best. She really was. She's a great cat. All right. Do you have anything? Um, I am going to plug... Uh, Bully Buddies. <laughs> No, I plugged Bully Buddies enough. Okay, Lily. Uh, not the cat. This one's the co-host of Bully Buddies. Um, who called me out. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to plug... Um, sprinkles on ice cream. Mm. I think that... It's gone out of favor, and I think it needs to come back. The last time I felt true joy was when I had sprinkles on ice cream. Not, like, specifically at that moment, but when I was feeling true joy was also an era in which I had sprinkles on my ice cream. And then I stopped doing that, and now I don't enjoy life anymore. So Personally, I fucking hate sprinkles, but... I don't think I like sprinkles either. It's just, like... You know, there's, there's an aesthetic, to... there's a youthful joy of like, you know, this is a little extra, a little, a little sauce on top. Yeah. This is fun just for me, except yeah. I don't like them. Do you, are you anti sprinkle or you're like sprinkle neutral? I am anti spray. I hate them. I think they taste bad. I think um, that they taste bad and they kind of ruin the texture of ice cream. I, yeah, because when I'm but having that's ice cream, part of I the want fun. a nice, smooth cream. I don't need little crunchy, mm-hmm. shitty pieces. I kind of do. I kind of need it. You need a little crunch? Yeah, maybe. You like a crunchy cream? I don't know. I'm going to get sprinkles and ice cream and I'm going to make it at home and okay. uh, report back next week. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, I don't know. That's the episode, folks. Sprinkles on ice cream. Check it out. Don't Only do it. Only rainbow. Don't get chocolate sprinkles, you 
idiot. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.